right, so guys, in Chernobyl there are a lot of different species of animals and, and what the tour guide was saying there are about 300 stray dogs that run around in Chernobyl and I've actually found my first one so I'm going to show you now guys. Here it is. This is one of the stray dogs in Chernobyl. Our first one of many that we're probably going to see running around in Chernobyl today. Hello mate. No, he's just chilling. He wants to stay out the rain and he doesn't want to be hassled. So I'm going to get the camera out of his face and carry on. So guys, we are actually stood in a furniture shop now and everything that was sold here was sold to be put into the apartments. And as you can see, a lot of the stuff is still here. A lot of we've got drawers, cupboards, uh, yeah, all the furniture that they would need in their apartments. And as you can see, it's a pretty decent sized room. So yeah, guys, the name of this shop is called Rainbow. And as you can see, the main colour of the furniture in this room is, is, is brown. So uh, <laughs> it's a bit funny, that. Yeah. So guys, as we walk around Pitpriette, there is a lot of graffiti. And it's pretty amazing graffiti. I mean, check this out. That is proper artwork, that is. And I mean, this has been there for just over a year. And also, guys, recently there has been a sighting of a bear actually in Chernobyl. So, uh, yeah, it's quite um, ironic, really. Now, I think the next place that we're going to explore is probably the place that I've been looking forward to the most. We are going to the amusement park. Now, I want to go there and get a photograph. That is, like, the main reason that I'm here. Cannot wait. All right, so, guys, we are here. We are in the amusement park now. And I can see it. The most iconic part of Pipriette. The fairy. Explorers, we are now in the amusement park. Now this place was supposed to have been opened the 1st of May. That was the official opening of this amusement park. But they actually opened it early on the 26th, the day of the disaster. And that is because they wanted everybody to come down there and they didn't want anybody to panic what was actually happening in Pipria and how dangerous the nuclear explosion was. So they opened it just to like put everybody's mind at ease and it was only open for one day. And one thing that I noticed coming here is that Ferris wheel is a lot bigger than I first thought. I mean when I see photographs and stuff it doesn't actually show you really how big this ferris wheel actually is <laughs> and then we have warren he's actually riding one of the rides there and then right down at the end we've got the dodgems and then a shooting range right behind and as you can see what i will show you guys later there is some more artwork and there are some deer on the walls this is probably one of the most iconic things in pipriat this is one of the main things that i wanted to see coming here there's only one thing that I can do while I'm here, and that is, I've got to touch it. I've got to just, t I've, I've just got, I'm here. There we go, I've touched it. We have touched the Ferris wheel in Pipriot. And the one crazy thing is, when you walk around Pipriot and you see all, like, the paint and stuff, most of the paint has completely, like, disappeared. But the caps on this Ferris wheel are still yellow. I don't know if they use some special paint on this Ferris wheel. <laughs> So guys, check this out. This is pretty crazy. Um, like on one spot, not so high. One spot, not high. But just moving it over, it goes to 207. And that beeping that you can hear indicates that there's um, gamma rays coming from this Ferris wheel. So look at that. That's already it, gone down uh, to 2.8. There's, there's beeping? It means that through the device, uh, like, flies the gamma rays. 
you see as uh, further the beeping start to go lower yeah and as closer it's just crazy it's that one little spot on her right so explorers we are actually going to go inside the dodgems now and show you a close-up view of these So guys, it's crazy to think that this amusement park was open just for one day. All the money that was spent to build it, and they only opened it for one day, it's like, yeah, it's hard to get your head around. Right, so explorers, we are now inside a parade room. And as you can see, all the banners are here, but were never used. Now this was gonna be used on the 1st of May, the opening of the fun fair. And obviously the disaster happened before they could actually use it. So it's just all left there in this room, never used. And now guys, we are going in to the theater. So guys, we are now at the back of the stage in the theater and beyond this point would have been all the seats, but we can't go any further because it is pretty dangerous in there. And guys in front of us as well, we've got some more lighting. And then beyond that would have been the seating area for the audience and the people that are going to come here and watch the theatre. Not going any further because it is like very, very dangerous. Explorers, we are now outside a grocery store. Now, as you can see, you can see all the shopping carts are still inside. And what I've been told is, now this isn't 100%, but it's what? A lot of people think that this was the first like grocery store and shopping market in Ukraine to have um, like trolleys like other supermarkets that you'd have to go to and grocery stores you'd have to ask for what you wanted this one you could just go around and get whatever you wanted and apparently that was the first one in Ukraine to do that because they wanted to make Pipriet like the, um, the the best city or best town in Ukraine and again, you can see the names of each aisle and what would have been sold in them aisles. And I think you just, I think there is still the fridges of um, where they'd actually keep all the groceries. And again, guys, outside the supermarket, we have more graffiti. And these are, this is over 10 years old, as I was told. So we've got one, which is a, a little kid on like one of them bouncy balls. And over here, is another kid pulling a funny face. Right, so guys, we have come to some residential flats in Pipperet, and we are going right to the top. So guys, we are now on top of one of the block of flats, 16 stories up. Just check out this view. I think this is one of the best views in Pripyat that we are ever gonna see. Absolutely incredible, guys. I'm, I'm literally lost for words, I am speechless. And guys, if you look over there, in the distance, that huge, huge dome is Reactor 4 in Chernobyl. The reactor that blew up and caused all this destruction. Also guys, while we are up here, over there is Belarus. That is the border and that's what separates Ukraine from Belarus. Guys, just to show you how high we are, if you're scared of heights, Look away now. Sixteen stories high, looking over Pripyat. Absolutely incredible. My dream has definitely come true, guys. So we're here entering the hospital now. 
and this is the main hospital in Pipria. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff to see in this place. Right, explorers, we are now in the hospital in Pipriac, and the first room that we come into is an operating theater. Now, as you can see, we've got the lights on top, we've got the operating table, and we've got some medical equipment. I'm not quite sure what's in it. If you can translate that, then, yeah, translate it for us in the comments section. Also guys, looks like there's like um, some sort of safety uh, coat or something, doctor's coat. I'm not sure what it is. Honestly explorers, check out how long these corridors are. With no electricity inside there and as dark as it is, it is so eerie. It's time to get the lights on and explore this hospital a little bit more. So guys, if you've seen um, Josh's video on Chernobyl, you know that he went into the basement of this hospital and he found all the firefighters' um, equipment down there. This was one of the main entrances to get down, but what they've done is they filled it in now, so you, yeah, it's a lot harder to get in. But yeah, that would have been good to see, but we can't get down there. And apparently it's like a maze down there, very hard to uh, get around. But uh, yeah, very radioactive down there as well. And next to the entrance, guys, there's a, a safety suit here. And that is to stop people from like cutting themselves while they're down there. And, like get infected with like radiation and stuff that they want to keep out of your bodies. Alright, so guys, in the basement, there is still the like clothing that the um, firefighters would use. Somebody's actually brought a bit of the fabric that was worn by a firefighter up. Now if I stand back and look at our meter, you can see it's reading 0 0.33. Now if I put this next to that bit of fabric, you can see it's now reading, it's going up, 10.54. And it's just going to go up and up and up. So that just shows you how radioactive the firefighters' like clothing and stuff was. So guys, this room here would have been used for like water therapy. So obviously, you'd get the patient, you'd put them in the bath, and just try to get them moving again. I mean, like their muscles, they're going to seize up. Get them into the water therapy, it's going to relax the muscles. It's, it's just going to make them feel a lot better. So this is what this room would have actually been used for. Right, explorers, we're coming into the maternity area now. This is where they would give birth on the, that table. And look, it's even set up still, ready for somebody to come in here and give birth. I mean, we've got the huge operating lights above. So, explorers, this book here, everything that you read ends in 85. I mean I don't know if these are the names of like patients or like the babies that were delivered but 85 is the last date that it goes to. Wow. Oh god. We've got another one. Got another one of these birthing chairs. So guys you can just picture how they would have given birth in this hospital. <laughs> I'm not going into too much detail, you've got your own imaginations. But somewhere down here is where they would have bring the babies.
Right guys, we are now coming into the room where they would bring the babies once they have been born and put into like little beds or their little cots or whatever they, they call these uh, baby beds and they're all exactly the same as well some are rised up and some are completely flat So guys, we're in another like theatre room. Now this could be a room where they bring like the patients to check if the baby's okay. And again, we've got a cabinet over here with some like medical supplies still in the cabinet. Not sure what any of it is. I mean, we still got stuff inside like glass bales. 